Well, the Philippines uh, of necessity will catch up with its neighbors because, for example, in terms of tourism, while you have Thailand with 30 million, you have Singapore with 15 million, we are now around 4 million. And, and in the nature of things, uh, many of you have traveled, I have traveled. Uh, after you have visited uh, a place, you look for another place to visit next time around that you have not visited. So eventually they'll say, oh, we haven't been to the Philippines, let's visit the Philippines. Now, uh, tourism will be an engine of growth, and uh, uh, we should hopefully arrive at a point in time where we will also get 15 million or more tourists. And at that point in time, uh, that will really uh, create so much employment and so much livelihood for all the... Uh, businesses and industries related to tourism. So tourism will be the main hope for uh, the future that you're talking about. In terms of uh, uh, manufacturing, there are signs that uh, China already, because of its development, is also now uh, paying uh, higher wages and it's become uh, also expensive to manufacture in China. And I understand that some of the textile factories are coming back here from China. So, again, as the other countries become uh, super developed, let's put it that way, uh, the cost of living and the wages will also go up so much, so much so that the Philippines then becomes an attra attractive alternative. So, there is good hope uh, for this country and. Uh, we, we have to, however, uh, still um, review our governmental structures. I think uh, it's uh, not good policy to have uh, a three-year term for local officials, for congressmen, and even for officials. That's too short, and we're having too many elections. So we have to review our government. Uh, in the United States, you only have 10 departments. Here we have 25 departments. Maybe we should start reviewing how we can uh, simplify the government.